Take care, brother. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah, hand, right hand, man. You can't hold any left hand. I have to, man. Uh, I, well, I can't it. talk to you then. I'm sorry. It's God. It's God. It's God. Talk yeah. about. We can only hold right the Quran in our hand. hand. Yeah, we can. Where does it say that? In it doesn't have to say it in the Quran. Yeah. yeah, we cannot put it on the floor. But that's for that's, that's but even, that's even with your guys' Bible. That's, that's for your that's for so we have to respect all religions. So if yeah, I so if I hand you a Bible, you you would have to hold it in your right hand. Churches, we yeah, can't. If you hold a Bible, I don't know if that's specific. Right, like, but we are supposed to treat yeah. all religions with respect. So you would hold the Bible in your right hand. I would personally. If this is on YouTube, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Well, every Muslim, if you do not know that, it's a message. I still feel a lot. I still feel a lot. Tell people to hold the Quran in the right hand. Really, Muslims. You hold the Bible in your right hands, all respect. I'm, I don't know if that is mandatory, but you should treat all religions with equal respect. Even in the Quran, it says believing Jews and Christians will go to heaven. Because at the end of the day, no one can say if someone else is Muslim or not, if they're a believer, if they're not. Only God knows what's within our hearts. He knows everything. We are not to judge anyone. Allah SWT is the best of judges. So I don't, yeah, I don't want to hear anybody disrespecting Christianity, Judaism, any of that either. Awesome. That that does not exist in real Islam. Anybody tells you otherwise, know. they are not practicing Islam how it's supposed to be. Islam is perfect. Muslims aren't. You know, I have tattoos. I've done. I, I don't know. Probably today, I um, probably did something. You know, but so so. What are you, what are your thoughts on then? Because there's a lot out there, and I and I've trust me. Yeah, I, what I, are I, you, I read some things. I'm very on why open, I, very straight to the point. So okay. the most like ridiculous critical claims you can think about you Islam. sure oh for sure you, you won't leave, walk out and leave i mean if you're respectful i'll be re i'll be as respectful yeah, as i can yeah, yeah. About it. you said uh, you, you said you, you said yeah, let me that, grab a seat yeah, yeah. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right so um just giving you one of the one of the biggest things for me that i that turns me away from islam mm. is uh child marriage being taught in islam not just not just the fact of child marriage, but having sexual relations with prepubescent girls, mm. you know, girls who aren't matured yet and things of this nature. So I just want to get your general idea just on this thought before we even go into it. Would you agree that it is not OK for grown men to uh, be having sexual relations with immature girls? I have no idea. That's what I'm saying. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, yeah. Forget, like, I just want your general idea. Forget Islam or Christian. Like, just your general idea. Do you think it's wrong for oh, grown men to have sexual relations with uh, Im immature girls? Okay, well, yeah, religion aside, what okay, is religion aside. grown? What is immature? So, like, somebody like you uh, and me, I'm 28. I'm 25. 25, yeah. dope. Um, and I go get with, like, a seven year old. Like, I have sex with her. Of course, yes. I would say my personal morality that it wouldn't fit. Like, thank you. I agree. So, I don't think that seven is mature, but mm -hmm. there are different ages that people mature at. Like for me, I have puberty very early, like ten years old. <laughs> I grew up very like twelve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, first of my brother, who's like five years older. Yeah. And he didn't get anything like for me. Yeah, I did a couple push-ups and like <laughs> I got like bicep veins and stuff. I used to do bye bye. I, I, I quit. Hey. But like our genetics are completely different. Like he got a lot of honestly the Japanese side. He's very much like my mom and I very strongly got my father's genetics. But yeah. uh, you know, there's some people that they're not mature, especially Asians. My mom is four foot eight. They could be you know 18 years old and they're still too small to have a child without like a very complication so very high risk yeah, yeah. So, so it depends i would say you know yeah. age i would say that is just definitely just numbers not just for yeah. mental maturity because yeah we can all agree yeah physical maturity age, and mental yeah, yeah age, it can vary like there's 40 year olds that are yeah more so, dumb than 10 year olds no you're right and, so yeah. this so this is what i want to get to okay so both of you we both agree automatically that's a no-no right grown men uh, adults getting with immature children that's that's just to me. I'm gonna be very frank and real because you said I could be transparent. Yeah, to, all right, it's nothing I haven't heard of before, bro. Okay, I grew cool. up after 9/11 in Tennessee. Okay, yeah, so as you an Afghani with the name Rahmatullah. Yeah. So I this jumped every day after school. Oh, that's so, tough. 
So no, yeah. there's nothing I ain't ready for, bro. Okay, for sure, for sure. So, all right, so for me, this is a big thing for me, okay? Yeah. So in chapter 65, well, I'm dropping stuff. Chapter 65, verse 4 of the Quran, it talks about divorcing uh, your women. I'm going to get my so I can read it to me also. Okay. 65, ayah 4. The waiting periods? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it says, And those of your women, as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them, the idda, the waiting period, is, uh, if you are in doubt, is three months. And for those who have no courses, it says, i.e., they are still immature, their idda is three months, likewise. And for those who are pregnant, da -da -da -da, whether they are divorced or their husbands are, are dead, their idda is until they lay down their burden, uh, give up the baby, and whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will, uh, he will make his matter easy for him, okay? So here's the point. Mm. At the top of this, it says, and uh, those of your women as have had have passed the age of monthly courses, right? So they're too old. This is um, menopause. They're too, a too old to have their uh, periods. Let me read this because it's different. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Wording. Well, yeah, I think this is a lot better. It's a lot more clear. That's why it's called a clear Quran. <laughs> it straight up says menstruation. Oh, menstruation. that's good. So I'll read it also, you know, in case that's too complex for them. You can just edit that out. <laughs> I edit my reading out. No, I mean, you can lead it if you want. It's no, just, no, no, no. The, the, the good one is good. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Waiting periods for divorced women. All right. Bismillah. As for your women past the age of menstruation, in case you do not know, their waiting period is three months, and those who have not menstruated as well. As for those who are pregnant, their waiting period ends with delivery, and whoever is mindful of God, he will make their matters easy for them. Mm -hmm. This is the commandment of God, which he has revealed to you. Yeah. And whoever is mindful of God, he will absolve them of their sins and reward them immensely. Okay, so you're you asking... I'm saying that this verse is, uh, is teaching you about how to handle your divorced women, right? So that they can move on to the, to, the, to the next lover, basically. Their waiting period. So there's three groups of women mentioned. There's the older women who are too old to menstruate. There's the young girls who have not menstruated yet. And then there's your pregnant women. Okay? So... That's what it's it's telling you how to you know how to handle divorcing those three groups of women, mm. those three groups of girls, right? So, one of the groups is where my problem is is with the immature ones. So it's showing that they've married these girls and now they're divorcing them and they're still immature. Now here's the key to this. The key is the idda, the waiting period. The waiting period is right is the the three months to make sure the girl is not pregnant. Why is the idda involved? Because the idda is when is to make sure they're not pregnant, meaning they had sex with them. And so the Quran elsewhere says in chapter 33, verse 49, it says, if you have not touched your wife, she does not have an idda. When you're divorcing her, she doesn't have an idda. So the fact that she has an idda, the young immature girls, the fact that they have iddas means that their husbands have slept with them. They had sex with them, yeah. even though they're immature. So is that your interpretation? No, that's that's what the the scholars interpret. Like I I looked at the top series on this and everything. I've never heard that before. I thought it would be a good place to take a break here, so that we can get into the nitty gritty of the Islamic sources here. So we're gonna check out the commentary, the top series, on chapter sixty five verse four, and see what the scholars have to say on this matter. So going to the top here we look at Tafsir al Jalalain, and this is what they say. It says, And for those of your women who no longer expect to menstruate, if you have any doubts about their waiting period, their prescribed period shall be three months. And also those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age their period shall also be three months. So according to Tafsir al-Jalalain, chapter 65 verse 4 speaks of divorcing the girls who have not yet menstruated because of their young age. So this isn't women who 
are sick or who have health issues and that's why they haven't menstruated. No, they haven't matured yet because of their young age. They haven't hit their menses, their menstruation, because they're too young, right? That's according to Tafsir al Jalalain on ch chapter 65, verse 4. Now let's go over to Ibn Kathir. Now Ibn Kathir reads, it says, the idda of those in menopause and those who do not have menses, do not menstruate, okay? Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause and that this is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her older age. Her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate which is based upon the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 228. Here it is, guys. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. Their idda is three months like those in menopause. Right? So they have the same idda, waiting period. They have the same waiting period as the older women. This is the meaning of his saying. And for those who have no courses. So, according to Ibn Kathir, according to Tafsir al-Jalalain, the meaning behind, uh, and for those who have no courses, that means the same for the young who have not yet menstruated. They have not reached the years of menstruation. They're too young. Because of their young age, they have not matured yet. These are the type of women that are being divorced. These little girls are being divorced and they have a waiting period checking to see if they're pregnant. These little girls. Now, let's continue on to the consensus of the scholars. Let's go to the fiqh, the ruling. The ruling on marrying a young girl. And here's the link, you guys. I'll put all the links in the description. Now, what's the fic on this? The second section, the ruling on marrying a young girl. The first issue, the father's marriage of the eldest daughter. This is by agreement of the four schools of jurisprudence. The Hanafi school, the Malikis, the Shafis, and the Hanbala. And there was consensus on that. Then they go on to quote chapter 65 verse 4. My Arabic readers, you guys know what this is about. And they continue to say, the verse included the permissibility of marrying off a young girl. And there is no right to marry her with her unless her father gives her in marriage. So what did this just say? The verse per gives permission of marrying off a young girl, right? And there is no right to marry her unless her father gives her in marriage. And what is the proof of this? What is the example that they use to back this up, to back up their understanding of the verse? What example do they use? Well, only the best example for all mankind, of course. Second, from the Sunnah. On the authority of Aisha, may God be pleased with her. The prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace, married her when she was a girl of six years. And she, now this is a bad translation here, I'm going to read it, but what it really says, it says, and she was married to him when she was the daughter of nine. What it really says in the Hadith is that uh, he married her when she was a girl of six, and he consummated the marriage with her when she was nine. So he married her at six, had intercourse with her, sexual relations with her, when she turned nine years old and she stayed with him nine years. So that's the example that they give to back up their understanding. Now, what's the significance of this? This is according to the consensus of the scholars, by the way, guys. This is the fiqh, the ruling on marrying little girls in Islam. This is explicit in the permissibility of the father marrying off a young girl without her permission because she has no permission. 
So the little girl has no say in the matter. She, she doesn't have to give her consent. There is no consent of the little girl. It's the father that gives her off to marriage. He is the one who uh, has the permission or gives the permissibility to marry this little girl, his little daughter. It's up to the father, not to, to the little girl. She can fight all she wants, but it's not her say. It's up to the father, okay? Without her permission. It's explicit, right? Now, let's go over to, let's go over to now uh, the Asbab al-Nazul, which is the reason why verses are revealed. Asbab al-Nazul means the reason why verses are revealed, why the verses came out in their context, okay? And so, this is what we find in the Azbab al-Nazul by al-Wahidi, okay? I'm going to put all the links in the description. So, talking about chapter 65, verse 4, <clears throat> And for such of your women as despair of, of menstruation, right? The ones who are older. Said uh, Mukatil, when the verse women are divorced show women who are divorced shall wait keeping themselves apart, Khalid ibn al Numan ibn Qais al Ansari said, O Messenger of Allah, what is the waiting period of the women who does who of the woman who does not menstruate and the woman who has not menstruated yet? And what is the waiting period of the pregnant woman? So it's asking for three categories of women. The woman who's too old, the woman who's too young to have menstruated, and the women who are pregnant. Right? And so Allah, exalted as he, revealed this verse. So this is the reason why it came down. Now, it quotes a lot of people giving the report. So when we jump down to the, where it came from, Uthman Amr ibn Salim, who said, when the waiting period... Of, for divorced women, for divorced and widowed women was mentioned in Surah Baqarah, Ubay ibn Qab said, O Messenger of Allah, some women of Medina are saying there are other women who have not been mentioned. He asked him, and who are they? He said, those who are too young, such that they have not started menstruating yet those are who are too old whose menstruation has stopped and those who are pregnant women who are pregnant and so this verse was revealed so what's the reason why this verse came down because there were women who were left out on how to deal with them being divorced how to handle their divorce what's their waiting period you know <clears throat> And according to all the scholars, the consensus of the scholars, according to the Azbab al-Nazul by al-Wahidi, according to Ibn Kathir, Tafsir al-Jalalain, and we could check all the other Tafsirs, it's, they're all going to say the same thing. Chapter 65 verse 4 is talking about divorcing young girls who have not menstruated yet. And they have a waiting period in Idda, which means that their husbands slept with them. I'll stuck fully loud. Yeah, so I, I could show you because we I don't have much time, but I could show you. Look, let me show you the verse really quick here. 30, ooh, 3349. And I want you, uh, you know, when because you're from what I know is that even marriage that like even like the most extreme and ranged marriages that I've heard of yeah. is that they cannot even have penetration with them until, like I said, like that they're fully done, developed. Oh, and grown. no, sir. That's the, in the in the actual ruling and. Hopefully, maybe I like I could get in touch with you and show, just show you what I've what I've learned, bro. Yeah. For in sure. the in the actual ruling, the Ijma, mm. they uh, you can try to penetrate uh, at whatever age, even if they're immature, if if she can take it. Basically, that's the rule. Who decides if she can take it? The consensus of the scholars. So, so no. like it's like yeah. I, don't know. I, I, I know it sounds crazy, bro. It's that's not like, about sounds. Is that um, like I'm saying? If you're gonna say bold claims like that. That is you gotta prove it. You gotta prove it, right? Well, yeah, in a lot of a lot of different ways, you know. Because sure, I'd be the first one to tell everybody, you know, that, that what 
it's like you have to be very careful too you know <laughs> because yeah. Yeah, okay, i'm not yeah. gonna go around you know saying crazy stuff about christianity unless i know it's exactly like that's sure. that's why i wouldn't i wouldn't bro i yeah. would never bring something this Good like question are you familiar with yeah. mohammed and aisha mohammed's all his own yeah and, and aisha his wife yeah i know it was wife. Was, was that and, and yeah. her age like did you know that she what? was she was nine years old when he consummated the marriage with her I don't know the specifics of it. Like oh, I, I've really? heard that, um, like that they got married in at like possibly at that age or whatever, and that there's a lot of debate between that, especially you know with all the other common stuff against Islam. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's not something that I have the knowledge to speak on. Like, that, and that's fair. Uh, so I haven't yeah. studied that. That's that's perfectly yeah. fair. So this, so this is what. So let me just show you this verse, just to show you that I'm not like tripping. So it says, "Oh, you who believe." When you marry believing women mm. and then divorce them before you have sexual intercourse with them, no idda, right? Divorce prescribed period. And look, it even uh, gives a reference for 654, what we just read. So no idda have you to count in respect of them. So give them a present and set them free, i.e. divorce, in a handsome manner. Mm. So they don't have an idda if you had not had sex with them according to the Quran, it, uh, right? Means and it is the waiting period, the prescribed period for them to, to wait. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you mean like there's a nikah where you say, okay, we're practically husband and wife, and then you don't have sex with them, and then so there's no waiting period to just say, okay, it's over. Exactly, yeah, so so, so you could just divorce them and it'd just be that. Uh -huh. So you're pretty much saying that you think that it means that people say, okay, so if I there's a child, just say however old, and then I said, okay, we do nikah, we're married, you can have sex with her. No, but, but, but what is the, uh, like, what's the thing to debate? That That's it? It's just that if, yeah. you, if we get married, then it's okay to have sex? Mm -hmm. Even with immature girls. So saying even like a three-year-old, that's why you're saying law, it doesn't matter. No, not by my law. Well, I mean, like, uh, the, that we're saying that the, if the this was, uh, what, this is what you mean. Like, so the age doesn't matter. Like, yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah. three, not, yeah, two. Not, not, not according to Islam. Uh, not according to the Quran here. Right. Okay. So that's your belief. So yeah, that's that's my big. That's my no. probably my so number, that's your one number one thing. Probably. Okay, I'll actually, I'll try to. I don't like ask, ask people. Around. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. So so what I want what I want you to do. To see if I can because if yeah. you know if that's something even like the masses are like uh, distraught about like dude I mean I would if I believe that yeah. I would def but that's just something that. Uh, even now it's like if you knew that this was in here would that be a problem for you if, if this was the case if that was true islam yeah oh for sure yeah okay I but at the end of the day i'm saying there's many things like <laughs> are in the quran such as marriage that mm -hmm. i never would get married my entire life until i read it in the quran really. yeah, yeah. I was like, it's man in the west you only have things to lose shalom, shalom. And so especially it's like why would i stick to one woman but God prescribes it for me, so I try to understand it. I try to seek the knowledge, but I'll still say, you know, like, I'm not convinced because it's like you will see whatever you want to see when you read a certain text. It's the context. What are you looking for? You know, someone could say, nice shirt, and you'd be like, what's she talking about, bro? Or like, oh, thanks, man. It's all like your perspective, you know? Yeah. So, I, I, I don't and that, keep you holding yeah. it is time for prayer, but I don't want to. Yeah, Jazakallah here. Take care of you. Thank you for the conversation. Oh, my God. Logic.